So please take a comfortable seat, an upright seat. I'm so glad you're dedicating to your well-being like this. Thank you. So you can rest your hands in your lap and close your eyes if you like. And so when you take a seat this morning, if you're in the Pacific Northwest where our, our um, smoke pollution, fire, all the devastation for several days, maybe 10 or 11 days, I didn't hear birds in my neighborhood. And now we can hear them calling out again. So if you're also having an experience like that, there's something in your environment it sort of disappeared and now it's returning like a light beam coming in through the window because the clouds and the smoke pollution have cleared some. If you're not having that experience but you can imagine it with us, I'm going to ask you to have a felt sense of what does your body do in response when a bird song comes back or light finds its way through a window, which means through the trees, which means through the sky, which means from a very long distance away. What do you sense in your body? And if there might be some different ways of feeling that, like a feeling of relief or a sense of appreciation or gratitude, I'm recommending all of those things. You feel relief, you feel gratitude, you feel appreciation. And at the same time, let's keep remembering the, the sheer preciousness of our ecology. So even though some things are returning and our air quality is better, we know that the planet is, as a, a whole, it's not out of harm's way. It's not out of the danger zones. So let's let ourselves fill up with this sense of appreciation for all that we do have and what is returning. And then simultaneously keep a sense of the larger calling. So my encouragement is that relief or appreciation doesn't obscure our internal sense of the importance, the imperatives, and our ability to be responsible in that direction. So with this in your awareness, now start to breathe more deeply and smoothly. So you're going to center yourself between these sort of two co-arising, even seemingly paradoxical states like appreciation for the present moment. Some things are returning, the air is clearing, but also awareness of the larger dilemma. So let your breath now come in to, to bring you to the center line of your experience, not closing off on either side, this awareness, but having a sense of this internal resource You could even imagine on the inhale that you're braiding together these two experiences, appreciation and awareness of the vulnerability. Appreciation and awareness. So inhale, those two things weave together. And exhale, let yourself settle deeply back in to greet the next inhale where these two things are weaving together. And please do that for three breath cycles more. And 
And then you can bring your hands together at your heart. It's also kind of weaving together at right? the two palms coming together, left hand, right hand, past and future. Appreciation and awareness. So we'll chant together Asatoma Satgamaya. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha and with your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands, open your eyes. And we'll begin with a little bit of opening for the side ribs, the diaphragm, the back waist. So. If you're sitting in a place where you can easily reach the floor to your left or your right, or if you're sitting on a chair and you have a surface to your right or left, you'll actually want your hand to be on something. And that could be a yoga block or two. Okay, so let's begin with, take the palms face out and inhale, rise up. And then exhale, left hand down, side bend to your left. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend to your right. Inhale, rise up, bringing the right up to the center. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale, rise up, gathering left to center. And exhale, side bend right. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, turn your palms face out, and as you stretch out, open your heart, your chest, your throat. And then inhale back to center. Okay, we're going to repeat that. So inhale the hands wide, palms up, rise up. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend right. Inhale, rise up. Left. Gathering left to center, right, and gathering right to center. Now once more, exhale, push out, and inhale to center.
And we're going to add to that sequence. I'm going to push back so I don't knock into my computer. And inhale, take your palms wide, rise up. We exhale, side bend left. Now inhale, rise up to center. Exhale, twist right. Lower your left hand to your right knee. Inhale, rise to center. Side bend left. Inhale, rise. Twist right. Rise to center. Side bend right. Rising up. Twist left. Rise up. Side bend right. Rising up, twist left, rising up, press out as you open, and inhale to center. Notice the echo, kind of the, the fragrance that continues from synchronizing your breath and your body. We'll do that same sequence one more time. I'm also aware that I'm integrating the hemispheres of your brain, that the actions that you're doing are requiring the left and right brain to collaborate. And so you might either become intermittently confused as that recalibration happens, or you might experience a greater presence or clarity when the activity ends. But during it, you have to remember I'm saying right or left, for example. Okay, let's do it again. So inhale, sweep the hands down, palms up, reach up. Now exhale, side bend left. And inhale, gather the left up to center. Exhale, twist right, gazing over your right shoulder. This can represent the past. Inhale, rise up to center, representing the now. Exhale, side bend left. Inhale, bring left up to center. Exhale, twist right, gazing at the past. Inhale, rise. Side bend right. Inhale, raising right to center. Exhale, twist left, representing future. Inhale, rise to center. Exhale, side bend right. Inhale, gathering right up to center. Exhale, twist left, acknowledging the future is our responsibility. Inhale, coming into the present, rise up. Exhale, push out. Inhale to your heart. So the past has to inform our view. And from the present we see that what comes next is our duty, our responsibility. As we hold equally appreciation that something of our particular environment right here over Oregon is clearing up, we also hold awareness of the fragility of the circumstances.
And we're going to come up to standing and also work with the breath and these processes in standing. So let me change my cameras and I'll meet you back on my mat. I have to get a little speed bump for that ball because it rolls around. Okay, here we go. So when you come back to your standing position or you return to that, Take a stance as wide as your yoga mat on the width of the mat, this distance here. Yeah, okay. Bend the knees a little bit like you're having horse stance. And we're gonna try the same process we were just doing. So for some of you, when you side bend, you're gonna feel like it's easier if your feet are parallel, but for others, toes out very slightly. Okay, so inhale, rise up. Now exhale, side bend to your left and sweep your left arm across like the yin yang symbol. And then inhale, rise up to center. Exhale, twist right by taking the right arm behind, left hand to your shoulder. Inhale to center. Exhale, side bend to your left. Take the left arm across. Good, inhale, rise. Exhale, twist. Inhale to rise, center. Now side bend to your right. Bring your right arm across like the yin yang, the two arms. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, twist left. Bring your left arm around behind. Inhale, rise. Side bend right, rising up, twist left, rising up, and then exhale, push out, open your chest, your heart, and your throat, and inhale, bring that to center. Okay, good job. Now step out wider for the jazz stance. Warm up pose for this one. Turn your toes out and the knees and toes, they should line up with each other. Okay, good. On this one, we're going to stay center for several breaths and then we will add a twist to the pose. So press out with both arms so you're actively stretching from the center of the pelvis out through your inner thighs. Put your weight into your big toes and your outer heels and sense what that does to the inner arches. Keep your inner heels grounded, but just emphasize your big toes right now and your outer heels. And breathe in smoothly. You've been opening up the diaphragm and the rib cage, and it's quite possible that your breath is going to feel easier to access right now. You exhale thoughtfully, starting the strength of the exhale with the muscles just above the pubic bone, and they are responding to the muscles of your pelvic floor. So you might sense it more in the muscles just above the pubic bone, but do know that those muscles are co-innervated with your pelvic floor. They're called transverse abdominus muscles. So start the strength of your exhale with awareness of that, and let the exhale strength sort of come up, up like a slow zipper towards your navel and your solar plexus. Then allow the inhale to start smoothly, not jagged, and to be consistent in volume and velocity. And then with your exhale, take your left hand in and twist to your right. We'll stay here for several breath cycles. And you can try the same process where on the inhale, you want to be aware to start smooth, keep the volume and the velocity consistent. And with the exhale, if you have a sense of your pelvic floor, you can begin there, awareness of that, or you can place your mind just above the pubic bone and try to connect to those deep transverse abdominus muscles.
Now come back to center, please, and rise up to standing with your knees in line with your toes. Take the tailbone down. Stretch into the front of the hips here for a moment. We are going to twist the other way in just a second. Let's see if there's a difference in the upper left or right quadrant of your back and the lower left or right quadrant because the twists only went in one direction. And then come down. So you get these little glimpses of how you are actually influencing the architecture and the ecology of your body. Turn your right hand in, please. Twist to your left. And try to sense again the same quality with the breath, that the inhale, both inhale and exhale have a smooth beginning, and they both have consistent volume and velocity. But when we focus on completing the exhale, sometimes that, in the beginning phase of developing this, sometimes that can make the inhale feel jagged at the start. So give your full attention to how the exhale completes and how your inhale then begins. complete exhale. And inhale, rise to standing, knees pointing out with your toes. Take the tailbone down, allow the front of the hips to open right here. And then turn your toes in, and we'll go heel toe, heel toe, come into mountain pose distance. Let's see if you can just sense that the four quadrants of the back, upper right, upper left, lower right, lower left. We are influencing the internal ecology and also the internal architecture, as I sometimes call it. Let's come into the sun salutation now. So let me tie my hair back just a moment, please. So in our sun salutation, we are going to include some twisting poses. And I know that people who are here in the yoga teacher training, like myself, we just had breakfast. We had a small breakfast, I hope. We had a reasonable breakfast knowing we were coming back for asana class, but it does mean that we're not going to do deep twists. I will be thoughtful about that. But please step forward for a Surya Namaskar. Join your hands at your heart. Now remember, when you bring your palms together, you're bringing together this appreciation. If something in your life has returned after a period of difficulty, like we have a sunbeam, where we have just ash and smoke. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, awareness that there is still a massive fragility that needs our response, our responsibility. So you bring those two things together. Acknowledge that you're here on your mat to renew, to restore, to recalibrate, and then to participate. Life will ultimately ask things of us, kind of uniquely person to person. And I just want to say I'm honored to play this role of teaching yoga and keeping you inspired and keeping us together. Let's begin here with the inhale. And then chair pose, bend your knees. Inhale, rise up. It's called upward hands pose, Ordva Hastasana. And then exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana, means intense backside stretch, the backside of the body. Inhale, glide forward, rise up to your fingertips. Exhale, left toes back, establish your firm foundation there. Now inhale, smooth velocity as you rise to the apex of your crescent lunge. This morning we're gonna stay for several breath cycles. So let the inhale go first third, middle third, upper third, and your exhale is going to start just above the pubic bone like a zipper rising up. 
And just be aware. The arms can be overhead for sure, and they can reach, and you can have energy in them, but they're kind of decorative right now because our primary focus is going to be here in the breath. Listen for how you make the inhale velocity smooth. And the exhale tone will increase slowly, but also deliberately. Yeah. Let's do one more inhale. And then exhale, arms wide. And as you come forward, without collapsing into your right hip, lightly touch the two blocks. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. And exhale, right toes back. Inhale to rise, and now if you have the capacity, let's say you've been practicing with me for some time and you're aware, you could balance the inhale breath with the exhale breath. You're aware of this option, you can bring that in. If you're new to this practice with me today, just focus on the smooth, steady velocity of the inhale and the smooth, steady velocity and tone of the exhale. And really thinking of these deep muscles pelvic floor, transverse abdominis. These are muscles that are related to our internal sense of safety, stability, stamina. So you can pace the breath if you're practiced at doing that. Otherwise, just pr practice the velocity and smoothness of the breath. Inhale one more time. And then exhale, arms wide. Come slowly forward. You have the tone of the low belly, which should help you to touch the blocks lightly here. Now place both hands and step backwards, downward facing dog pose. And then inhale forward to plank pose. And try to sustain your plank pose with grace, intention, the feeling of appreciation may help you here in plank pose. So breathing in, smooth velocity, breathing out, also smooth velocity. Good, and then inhale, reach backwards to downward facing dog pose. And on the exhale, step your right foot and then your left foot forward and return to the front of your mat in Uttanasana. With your heels grounded now, inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, inhale, rising up. We're gonna add a twist this time, exhale, chair pose. Sit down into your full strength and notice how the exhale supports this descent. And then inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, energize your legs, including your inner arches and inner thighs as you come down. Inhale, glide forward. Okay, take the left toes back. Inhale, rise. Now exhale, twist your heart to the right. Place your left hand on your right shoulder, right hand behind. And inhale to rise. So keeping the legs and the pelvis stable is really important. When you exhale and you're gonna twist right, don't sacrifice your left lower back or left hip. Inhale, rise. Exhale, twist right. It's really from your heart, upper back, shoulders, your gaze. Again, inhale to rise. When you twist this right time, remember I was saying that the right side can represent the past. Inhale, center. And then last one, exhale, twist right, gazing at the past, which is influencing the now. Inhale, rise up. And then exhale, arms wide. Let's come over and lightly touch the two blocks. When you inhale, float your heart forward, lengthen your spine, enjoy the full inhalation. 
Exhale, right toes back. Press down through your left heel for stability. Inhale, rise up. And when you come up, keep your pelvis stable. Exhale, twist, left. Inhale, rising up. Notice that your brain has to keep track of that. Right when you exhale, twist left, gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale to rise. There are others in this class recovering from a TBI or a concussion, so I'm with you. This is my difficult side to do. Inhale, rise up. Now remember, as we go left, we are gazing at the future, which is our responsibility. We inhale to come back to the now. One more time, exhale, twist left. Inhale, rise to center. There you go, and exhale, sweep the arms wide. Come down to touch the two blocks lightly and then place your hands firmly and step back, downward facing dog pose. And inhale, glide forward to plank pose, a pose of stamina and strength, requiring commitment, discernment. Inhale, reach it back to downward facing dog pose. And then exhale, left foot forward, right foot forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And exhale your hands to your heart. And observe the echo in your body and your breath. You can close the eyes. Just imagine you're witnessing, like if you were gazing at the aquarium, the water, the fish, the plant life. Or even more intimate, if you were scuba diving and you are amongst the water, the fish, the plant life, what's happening inside? Now we're going to shift this to include triangle pose, and I want you to see my profile view, so let me change where I am on my yoga mat. So this is, we're going to do some variations on the triangle pose, and by variations what I mean is how we're going to place the blocks. And it will change how you experience your inner thigh, and where your spine is twisting from. So go with me, you can think of it as kind of an improvisation. We'll get where we're going, you'll have an experience, and then we'll pause again in mountain, and we'll do the other side. Okay, so standing at the front of your mat for mountain pose. Enjoy your hands together at your heart. Okay. Inhale, sweep your arms up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, chair pose. Listen again for how the exhale gets more toned as you sit more deeply down to complete the breath. Then inhale, rise up. Smooth velocity on the inhale. And exhale, Uttanasana. Come forward and down. Now inhale, glide forward through your heart. And keeping your right foot planted, take your left toes straight back. Check that your feet can start here at least hip distance apart, left to right. Then straighten your right leg. Pivot your left heel. With your right block, Put it up on the tall setting, directly under your right shoulder, and inhale to twist to your left. Now on the exhale, I'm going to ask you to come down, but keep the right arm really strong. Keep your left hip where it is and reach your left hand past your right hand. And then inhale and twist to your left, Trikonasana. You can open it as far as comfortably possible for you. When you exhale, Again, bring it down. So keep your left hip and left heel totally steady. The left arm reaches so your left upper back is being invited to open here. Inhale, twist left. 
Exhale, come down and move through this three times more. When we're twisting left, since I assigned left to be future, you can imagine that right now you gaze up, aware that the future, you have a responsibility to that. We inhale to rise and may enjoy the opening and the awareness of our capacity growing just by practicing yoga. And by this I mean in this very moment, you can sense your confidence or your capacity or your, your sense of community or commitment might be getting revived. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, open to Trikonasana. And exhale, when you release down, this time reach for your left hand to the left block, tip the right block to medium again, and as you transition, bend your right knee, step forward. And then exhale to bow towards your legs. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Exhale to the heart. We're gonna do the other side now, so. We inhale, sweep the arms up. We exhale, sit down to chair pose. And inhale, rise up from chair pose. Good. And follow your exhale down to Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward. Okay, right toes back. Inhale, straighten your left leg, tip the block under your left hand up to the high setting. And now you've pivoted the back heel to the floor so you have the most stability for your feet in this position. Inhale to open. And exhale, release so that your right arm is gonna reach past your left arm towards the floor, but keep the right leg stable, please. Okay, inhale, open to your right. Exhale to return, and of course move at the pace that is your breath cycle, please. And in this process, you can start sensing how gazing at the past honestly and courageously, we recognize the past is influencing the now. And in this way, the past, the now, and the future are all within our responsibility. Twice more, please. Inhale to open. Keeping the left arm strong when you come down like this and keeping your right hip stable means you're really opening your upper back. So the pelvis is not really changing position in this twist. The heart and the thoracic spine are. We'll come down this time and reach for the block for your right hand. Tip the block for your left hand, bend your left knee and please step forward. Inhale your heart forward. And then exhale for a deep bow to your legs. The inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, hands to the heart. Okay, again, inhale, rise up. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise up from your chair pose. Exhale, down to your Uttanasana. Now inhale, glide forward. We're going to change the setup for triangle pose. Exhale, take the left toes back. Same as before, straighten your right leg, pivot your left heel down. But now, walk your right hand to the block that was under your left hand and make it tall and inhale to open. So you've got your right hand inside the right leg on this kind of diagonal. If the right leg is noon, you can place your hand at 1.30 or 2 o'clock. Inhale to open. 
and exhale to descend. So keep the left hip strong again and reach your left hand past your right. Inhale, open. You might sense this twist affects your mid thoracic or lower thoracic spine a bit more. Exhale. Inhale. Of course, at your own pace, you proceed now. Each exhale when you're returning, I want you to think of keeping the legs strong and your right arm strong. So you're asking for the movement to come from your mid spine, your upper spine, your heart, your shoulders, your eyes. But the lower hemisphere of your body should be very stable right now. Let's do one more time, please. Inhale. The future is our responsibility. We're going to exhale to come down and place your left hand on the tall block. Walk the right hand over. And let's bend the right knee, please. Inhale, step forward. And exhale for a deep bow to your legs. Inhale, rise up. Exhale to the heart. One more. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, chair pose. As you sit down to chair pose, use the low belly. And then inhale, rise up from chair. Exhale, come down to Uttanasana. And inhale, glide forward through your heart. Exhale, take your right toes back, straighten your left leg, tip the block under your right hand to be tall as you pivot the right heel down. Now left hand on this tall block, inhale, please twist to your right. And exhale to release. We'll do it about five or six times. To get the full benefit, concentrate on the smoothness of your breath to coordinate the smoothness of your movements. Consider keeping the lower hemisphere of your body really stable. And that includes, in this case, the lumbar spine, sacrum, pelvis. So when we're twisting down, you almost could think of like a cat pose moment in your spine here. We're rotating up. You're going to rotate from the upper lumbar, lower thoracic, mid thoracic, up into your gaze. Once more, inhale to open. And exhale to release. Place your right hand where your left is, and you can tip that block back down. Let's bend the left knee and step forward to Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. Ordva Hastasana. And then exhale, hands to your heart. And you close your eyes. Let your attention drop in. Let it come down to your heart your inner body, so the present is influenced by the past, the future will be influenced by the present. both hands, relax your arms, and I'd like you to have a blanket to sit on, please. I'm going to recommend that some of you have the blanket be a little bit thicker. One way to do that is you have your blanket and you fold it in thirds, like this. When you take a seat, we're going to sit in Upavista Konasana. So that means take the legs out wide, like this. Now, 
For some of you to sit up on the highest part of this blanket, that's going to be recommended because you want your pelvis to be able to come forward. For some, however, sitting up on however many high blankets you have, your hip sockets and thigh bone relationship doesn't mean that you can bend forward even yet there. In that case, I recommend that you bend the knees so that your femur, how it goes into the socket, changes slightly and you're able to actually consider coming forward. So that will be like a variation for some of us to do, rather than being stuck here where you feel like you can't reach forward. Right? And then for others, like myself, if I sit on this blanket, I already have this flexibility advantage in my pelvis, so it's actually better for me to sit forward on the floor and not to use a blanket to promote more of that pelvic tipping forward. So choose based on what you know about yourself. And then when you come down, I'd like you to have a support for your head. So for some of you, that's going to mean a block, something like this. But for others, when you come forward, you can stack the two blocks to support your elbows, to support your head. And for some, the block will be lower or higher. So it's not that you're better at yoga if your block is lower, by the way. When you come into a supported position here, let your breathing now become just very nourishing. Keep the legs gently energized. You don't have to make a strong effort at the breath. I'm asking you to allow it to nourish you. I do want you to consistently remember to keep your leg muscles toned. So you have this sense of connection to the earth from the inner heels of both legs to the inseam of your leg, the back of the calf, hopefully the center of the calf, the backs of your hamstrings if they're touching the floor. It's the center of the hamstring, not the inner hamstring. Welcoming the breath to be nourishing means not getting in the way of the breath, contacting the belly or the pelvis. Also means not daydreaming with the mind. And then walk your hands back somewhere near to a place underneath your shoulders. And press down with your hands to rise up to sitting. And then put the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana. What's interesting for me is that on this one, I definitely benefit by sitting up on, the on a blanket. And yet for some of you, this one you won't need the blanket, but you needed it for Upavista Konasana. And that is based on the shape of the hips and the hip sockets. I'm getting my block to come closer. I obviously have experience with that. So placing what you need to and acknowledging that for some of us, I have seen this in my yoga class at the studio one time, we were all coming forward to have the head supported. So one person, they just went like this because <laughs> there was no way their head was gonna get any closer. Now this isn't really that useful, <laughs> but it was a fun moment in class to realize I was giving instruction, but I still hadn't included everyone in the options. So let me say here, when you come forward, if forward is only very limited, you could put the elbows like this and support the head. You might also choose to sit on yet another blanket to give your, your hips would then be like higher and your feet would be lower and that can make it more possible to come forward. Otherwise, please come down. And again, let the breath be just a source of nourishment that you're giving attention to, aware that it's happening, appreciating that it's happening. And yet not forcing any part of it.
And then please walk your hands back to your knees. And you can bring yourself up to sitting. Hands out over the knees for a moment. And one thing you might notice is that uh, seated forward bend poses tend to be, we call them down-regulating. Please sit in your preferred comfortable position for a few minutes of pranayama. So my preferred seat is called Siddhasana. Siddhasana is where you line up the heels with the pubic bone. When you cross the ankles, that's called Sukhasana. This is called Siddhasana. And we're going to practice the alternate nostril breathing called Nadi Shodhana. So you take the first two fingers into the center of your palm like this. And when we get going, you'll be doing inhale, left nostril, exhale, right, and inhale, right, and exhale, left. So we always change the nostrils after an inhalation. We go to the other side. But on one side, we will exhale, inhale, before changing. Okay, so first, find and establish your upright seat. And remember, we're bringing together left and right appreciation and awareness of the fragility of our situation, appreciation for what's returning, awareness of the fragility. We're bringing together left and right, that the past is influenced and has been influencing the now, and the future will be influenced by the now. Now we bring the two hemispheres of the brain into further collaboration. So place your right thumb and ring finger, come down from the eyebrows, down the bridge of the nose, and then you can find this place where the bridge of the nose ends and the cartilage is right there. You're going to gently close the right nostril and inhale left side only. A momentary pause where you close the left side and you open the right side. Exhale, right nostril. And now inhale, right side. A momentary pause as you shift nostrils. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Exhale left and continue at your own pace, changing the nostrils after an inhalation.
When you complete your next exhale through the left side, then you can release the breath practice and sit for a few moments. Now noticing the experience that you have from even just a short pranayama. I'm going to ask you to take your left leg straight out in front and the right knee out to the side, like this. Okay, so this keeps it as an open twist. We're not going to bring the knee up to the chest because as I was saying before class, some people, they're in a training and they had to have their breakfast. Um, so we are going to be taking the left hand across to the right knee, right hand behind you. If sitting on a blanket means the floor for your right hand feels far away, you can use a block under your hand. And so raise your left arm up, please. And then exhale, twist to your right. Cross your left hand to your right knee, right hand behind. We do want to keep the left hip grounded, so when you're twisting to your right, but imagine the pelvis is a stable resource and you're turning your spine. Really the turning begins in the thoracic spine here. The lumbar spine has turned a little bit, but your primary rotation in your spine is actually in your rib cage and your upper spine, not your lumbar spine. As you notice your body breathing here, you can imagine again that twisting to the right, we are respecting that there is a past that has influenced the now. We have been a part of that past, whatever duration of time we have been. We're gazing back to acknowledge that the past has influenced and continues to influence the now. breath in please and exhale rotate around to face forward thoughtfully stretch your right leg out so this is called Dandasana and bring the left leg up this is called Janusirsasana so again both hips grounded to the best of your ability each hip has equal weight raise your right arm up and then twist your right hand to your left knee and walk your left hand behind you. And so when you're twisting in this case, gazing left, I just suggested to us this morning that we could consider that this is as we're gazing to the future and also recognizing our opportunity and our responsibility for that future.
And exhale, rotate around to face forward. Stretch both legs out straight now. And take the feet just a little bit wide. You might think of it like about the distance of a block like that. Not necessary to have a block, I'm just showing you. And this is for Paschimottanasana. So again, if you're very limber, sitting up on a blanket promotes possibly excess limberness for you. So instead, you sit on the floor. If you're not that limber, having a blanket is an advantage, a support to you. So please come forward. And for anybody who would like, you can also have a support or stack up some supports for your head. Now the kinds of supports you could have might include blocks, but also blankets, or I know that some of you brought your dogs to class. Maybe they are comfortably seated between your calves and your feet. Now forward bends tend to be down regulating, the twists are integrating. So you may find that your nervous system is becoming aware, oh, there is a deeply tired version of you in there. I spoke about that yesterday in our teacher training, how sometimes when we come back into the body, we have this homecoming, we might realize that some part of our operating system has been highly stressed and there might be a deeper fatigue underneath the surface of our daily awareness. Let's do one more breath here. And then you can rise up to sitting. And seeing as we have a couple of blocks and a blanket already out, let's use them for Shavasana. And we'll take a dedicated Shavasana so we have time for meditation at the end of class. So if you take your blanket like this and unfold it, and then fold it in half twice, lengthwise, you get this long, narrow blanket that looks like this. Okay, so it's a little bit thicker, longer, but also narrow. For me, it's about the width of my hand. When I place my hand like this, like this, that's how wide the blanket is. Right, and then you sit in front of, but not on your blanket. The two blocks are going to be for your knees, so when you lie backwards, you support the knees like this. You have an extra blanket reaching beyond your head. So you go right under the neck like this and curl a little inchworm form into your blanket, a little bump, a little speed bump into the blanket. And that little bump right there supports your cervical spine. Take the arms out to the side, palms face up if you like. My personal preference right now is I go arms sideways and I just take my hands and palms in to touch the low belly, the pelvis, this region of the abdomen. So allow your eyes to close. And this is where we also trust in the medicine of the practice. So you've put your efforts in, that is completed. And now we want to have the medicine go even more deeply. For that to happen, you can have intention, but not action. You're receiving the medicine. You can slowly watch from the inside how your body will get a little heavier a little heavier with relaxation.
Now to support your mind, to allow your body to rest, in case you aren't readily able to just receive, you can consider the heaviness of the body as a way to, we call it like a self-hypnosis, an auto-hypnotic resting place. So for example, you allow your forehead to get really heavy with relaxation, the eyebrows, relaxing down away from your hairline. Imagine the muscles of your cheeks softening so there's a melting quality for them from your eye sockets and the bridge of your nose and down to your earlobes. Allow your cheek muscles to deeply, deeply relax. As you welcome the heaviness of the face, then allow the hinge of your jaw, the sides of your neck, the tongue, your throat. They too can be heavy with relaxation. Allow the shoulders to start getting heavier. They say limp with relaxation. Allow the upper arms and the elbows to release.
now for the collarbones from the center of the sternum. Allow the collarbones to melt out towards the shoulders. And over the sternum, where each of the ribs is attached, allow the ribs to be more restful, like driftwood on the ocean. You can trace that down into your floating ribs where you'll be at the bottom of the sternum. And the floating ribs and the space between those floating ribs is called the solar plexus. As the sternum and the solar plexus soften, let this come down into the abdomen and imagine in the abdomen that the organs of the abdomen can get heavy with relaxation, that they actually rest the way if you were holding a tired puppy in your palms, it would be limp with relaxation, with confidence and safety in the well-being of things around it. Allow the organs to be heavy like that. Now welcome that heaviness to come down into the pelvis and the pelvic basin. You've been resting in Baddha Konasana, so try to sense what has occurred in releasing, starting up at your face, what has occurred, and invite the pelvis to have a few degrees more heaviness. And just lightly allow the breath to deepen now. So deep means the breath touches the low abdomen. And you can gently bring your knees back up to center. 
Stretch the left leg out, right leg out, and let both legs get heavy and limp on the ground. having a sense of the support of the earth beneath you. Gently wiggle your toes and your fingers. You can put the two blocks aside. Roll to your right, bring your knees towards your chest. When you're ready to, press yourself up to sitting. Take a seat that becomes your position for meditation. And now the quality of heaviness that I was inviting in Shavasana, we do need that in yoga, it's called tamas. We need it for the foundation of our meditation seat. But we also need this inner discernment, intention, motivation. And that's called rajas. With the tamas, we can have the rajas so that we get to have this opportunity for clarity, for grace, for the mind to be connected to all that is. And that's called sattva. So as you come up to your seat, think of this tamas, this stabilization, this rajas, this intention, motivation, this sattva, this clarity, lucidity. to stay present in the here and now. If it does wander because it has the habit to do so, you just lightly come back.
Please bring your hands together at your heart. You can sing with me. May our practice help us in discerning the real from the unreal, the temptations for darkness, apathy, resignation, blame, giving up, and to discern that which would be luminous or wise or skillful. May we discern the finite from the infinite. May we know what is precious. Asatoma sat kamaya tamasoma jyotir kamaya mrityodama amritam kamaya Om Asatoma sat kamaya tamasoma jyotir kamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namah I'm going to come up closer where I can see you. You can see me a little better too. Since I can't levitate, I have to get my physio ball to sit on just a moment. We didn't learn the levitation in my teacher training. I also don't teach levitation in this teacher training. <laughs> so, sorry to disappoint you if you came for the levitation lessons. We're only going to levitate you know, spiritually. How are you feeling?